I've uh, heard some different perspectives on this, and I'm curious to hear yours. I'm, I'm sure I know the answer, but uh, I've heard some Christians say it's bad to have debt. Like God doesn't want you to have mm. debt. You shouldn't have debt. And like if you do, if you are a Christian and you have a lot of debt, that's not a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we oftentimes, you know, being in the mortgage industry, real estate industry, we do talk about, you know, people investing and things like that and, you know, good debt, right? Where mm-hmm. there's a certain amount of debt that makes you actually a return on investment greater than the debt itself. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I hope, I hope it's what we think it is. Cause I got a lot of debt. <laughs> 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 <No>. <laughs> this guy, car says oh, long, uh, faster. Uh-huh. I got a lot of debt. So yeah, you know, good debt. Good debt. Uh-huh. Yeah, I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> I know. We'll find the <laughs> Yeah. It's, that's a great question. Well, you know, I think the two worlds that we live in are connected, but also separated. So I understand what you're talking about. And in a, on a practical money sense, you know, I am not a money guy like you guys are. I wouldn't, you guys would be my, you'd be my rabbis. You'd be my pastors <laughs> okay. when it comes like to that. any of this stuff. And you for might sure. be LinkedIn bio. Yeah. Financial <laughs> rabbi. Financial rabbi. Real estate rabbi. Yeah, like Real that. estate yeah. rabbi. Yeah. That's, your, that's your title. Real estate rabbi. That was a good one. Uh, just as long as you don't call yourself uh, money Jesus. Just, no, just don't no, do no. that. Uh, uh, that's probably somebody else has taken that title. Uh, uh, so I get what you're talking about, good debt and bad debt. I bought my house, but my, the bank owns my house. Like I'm paying my mortgage, but yeah. on a rational, just everyday life scenario to me, I consider that good debt. Cause I wanted to get in the market. I wanted to own my house, even though the bank still owns more of it than I own. Uh, but you have more control. Of course we know that. Um, but when it comes to the idea of debt in the Bible and what got to, what, what specifically the newer Testament talks about debt, there is no good debt. Okay. Um, but it's not just talking about just financial, mm. except for the debt that we owe each other of love, mm. the debt that we owe Jesus. So I know I'm, I'm jumping from money to real fun, real spiritual stuff. Like I'm jumping here cause I, I just, I'm going to go kind of philosophical and bring it back down to yeah. the practical. Um, so on the, on that side, that that's where we live on the philosophical side. There is no, debt that we want to have except the debt that we owe to love each other and the debt we have to Jesus. Um, but on the money side, the Bible just says that it doesn't say that there's good debt or bad debt. It just says that the, the one who owes the money is servant to the lender. Yeah. Yeah. The borrower, the borrower, is, borrower is server to the lender. Yeah. So it's talking about the principle of as long as you owe money or something of a debt, Mm. specifically it was talking about money, but there's a principle wrapped around that. That's greater than just money. As long as you owe something to someone else, you are then at their mercy because they can call that debt back whenever they want, really, because you owe them. And so in a money sense, we know that our banks don't typically work like that. We know that when you buy a house, that really is. So in a mortgage sense, go for it. I'm, I'm with you. That's good (laughs) debt. I get that. Now you don't want to overextend yourselves in debt, so then you're then you're so far extended in debt that you can't make your payments. Did you that's, hear that? Sorry, sell all everything well, that you have. You know, you know what? It's been it's been something that's been on my mind of like leaving and don't forget your point, please, because we're yeah. interjecting here. Yeah, yeah. But it's that you have the house, you've got the office we own too, but mm-hmm. you have you have these then you look at like my friend in Michigan who we were just visiting, he's got the same house that we do that costed him. 25% of what it costed our right. Home. Right. And he's like, dude, you know, like you can live here and mm-hmm. not have a mortgage. Like, here's, and I'm like, it's something you have to be a, a mindful of. And it's like, okay, well, if I've been fortunate enough to be in a position where let's say I have investment properties and there's equity, like I've been toying with the idea of like, just imagine what it would feel like mm-hmm. to just get rid of everything and not owe, not owe anybody anything. And you're still working and you're still doing great things, mm-hmm. but not actually owing. And that's kind of been in my heart more recently. And it's like, but I've done it for the last 11 years a lot more aggressively. Sure. And so it's like, why are you doing it now? What's the next phase for? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, what if you didn't have a mortgage? What if that, and some people look, real estate investors will say, that's silly. That's dead money in your walls. Mm -hmm. But you don't like to each their own. Like some people are not meant to have a billion dollars worth of real estate and have debt on that. Like that's. 
they're not meant to do that. Mm-hmm. And and some people are just meant to be happy with their family and their health and they're they're successful. Right. So you know, so it's these things that someone who's listening to this might be thinking just a singular way about this. Right. But there are many ways you can look at it. Many ways, yeah. For me, it all comes down to again what we just talked about. The question Danny asked about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do your investments and does your debt own you or do you own your debt? Uh-huh. So if it was to all fall apart and you had to pay them all back, can you still live your life? It, not financially the same, but can you still go, well, I'm still me. Yeah. My, my properties don't own me, my, or do they own you? Mm. And that's, I think, where you move on the line from health to unhealth. Mm. You move from you own it to it owns you. And how do you navigate that? And like you're the, both of you, your capacity to own and manage properties is way beyond what my capacity would be. And my capacity to do the things that I do is probably way beyond your capacity to do. And so God gifts us with different uh, skills and abilities. And there are people that, you know, when I watch millennials choice and I watch your podcast, I, I listen to what you guys say. I'm like, that was genius. (laughs) I'm such a dummy. (laughs) <laughs> like thank you. but thank you but, sure. thank, <laughs> but it's to the point yeah. that god's given you the ability and then you've grown that skill set you've honed those giftings and that way of thinking to be able to sit on a podcast where if a if a pastor was to come okay we need to talk to our church about mortgages and all, like i'd be firing questions off to you guys and you guys would be hitting it hard and <laughs> it'd be awesome i could never do that and so it all comes down to to me it's all about, does your debt own you or do you own your debt? Can you walk away from your debt today? Like I own my house. I love my house. But if I didn't have to have my house today and I needed to go rent somewhere, okay, God, all right. Because my life purpose isn't wrapped up in what I have. And my biggest challenge, maybe I know this is a, uh, it's millennials choice. So I don't want to be uh, undermining what you guys do, but no, one of my, for it, please undermine. One of, <laughs> yeah, one of my greatest <laughs> challenges might be to people who are real estate savvy or looking to build their portfolio is God has a bigger purpose for your portfolio than your portfolio. God's purpose is greater than the money you make. It's what do you do with the money you make? Mm. How do you serve others? How do you expand the influence of God in your world? There's a greater purpose mm. for the portfolio, the properties, the home. Uh, like I own my house, but God is the one who made it so that I could own it. So I entertain it. I entertain people in it. I use my home to be a blessing to people. And sure, they get to walk in and sometimes it's messy. But if I can invite them into the mess of my house, they can help me in the messiness of my life because they'll realize that I'm a real dude. I like that. And, uh, you know, we just can't put on that we're something we're not everybody's got laundry sitting on the couch. Yeah. Everybody's got <laughs> dirt on their floor when the dog comes in from outside. <laughs> like everybody's got, it doesn't disappear in your house because it's perfect. It's just gone when I show up because you clean the house. Yeah. Yeah. But we all got our stuff. We all got the dirty dish we leave on the counter. We all got the dish, even though the dishwasher's there, we all got the dishes in the sink. We all got, like we all got to have the spray in the bathroom. Like we all got it. You don't just have a perfectly you know, staged home, unless there's nobody living in it. Uh, and if you welcome people into that, it shows that you own it. It doesn't own you. Yeah. Yes. 